Hey guys, so today I'm going to show you how I painted a portrait of rock legend Jimi Hendrix. So painting each portrait is going to be different because of various elements such as the light source, brightness, the skin color, age of the person, hair texture, and background. I start off with painting the background and add the main base colors that were to set up the platform on which I would establish the rest of the painting. I blend very slightly the edges of the face and hair with that teal colored background so that the so that way the edges don't look too sharp and they will transition more smoothly into the background. With this painting I set up the grid early on because of the complexity of the lighting in the reference photo. I spent a lot of time matching from the photo onto the canvas. I then realized I need a more intricate grid system to match the eyes and the rest of the face. So I established smaller squares in the middle of the canvas as well as the reference photo in order to have as much accuracy as possible. I do that mostly with portraits because I want to ensure I match the person as accurately as possible and so obviously this is important when it comes to the portrait painting. With landscapes not as much because I do like to have more freedom of creativity with those. So anyways, after I establish the base colors, I go in and begin establishing the smaller shapes and angles of the portrait. I don't stay in one area too long because I want to get a basic picture going as soon as possible so I can have an idea of what I'm working with and being able to accurately check my progress. Painting this photo was difficult because unlike my other portraits I've done, this one has multiple light sources so I wasn't able to rely on my instinct about how light works from a specific angle. Instead, over here we have some red light coming from the left, some green light coming from the back and the right, and some natural light coming from the front. So we have three bright light sources. I had to establish early on in this painting this part, so the complexities came almost right away after I started. Just like with anything else, I add large chunks of color with the light parts of the face, and blend those together with the shadowy parts as well. And, to make things worse, I used acrylics in this painting instead of oils. Acrylic paints are very unforgiving because they dry so fast and you have to make sure that they mix properly as soon as possible, otherwise you have to reapply the paint and do it all over again. I'm just glad I put the grid early on because it provided me a structure to organize everything on the canvas. It can be discouraging to look at your painting when you're not done yet and see how messy it looks, everything looking out of order and not matching the photo. But this is the part where you have to stick it out and continue to grind. This is the part where inspiration should carry you through. Painting the hair actually was pretty easy and that provided me some relief. All I really did was use the same method as I would use with painting clouds or smoke. I used a lot of medium to keep the paint as wet as possible and also as diluted as possible so the color would be able to spread easily over the black base color of the hair. I would apply the diluted color of either red or green depending on which side I was working on and spread it out. If I saw any brighter areas that needed more highlights, I would add a less diluted and more intense color and apply that to the still moist mixture onto the canvas. Also, I didn't directly use red or teal colors for the lights on the face. I added some complementary colors to tone down the intensity of the color, so that way it would blend in with the flesh tones. Although, I did add a few touches of intense color later on to have more variety. That's the thing with painting flesh tones. Don't stick with one color, but slightly deviate the hue in order to make it look more realistic. The last stage of painting was the face, and adding it onto it was the small dots to uh, create the skin pores, because I wanted to make it as highly detailed. At this point, painting got easier because most of it was established already. Painting the rest of the picture, such as the clothes and the hat, was pretty easy, just matching what was on the photo already. It's interesting to think how light and its effect is what makes painting something so difficult, but since the clothing didn't have that issue, finishing the painting was a breeze. Anyways, I think I said everything I needed to for this portrait. I hope you were able to learn something from watching my footage. If you like this video, make sure to hit that thumbs up and subscribe for more content where I will show you other painting techniques. So enjoy the rest of the video and I'll see you next time.